Yo folks, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we'll be covering a beginner's guide for Honkai Star Rail. It'll be a culmination from my experiences from the betas and playing the launch. Let's jump right into this. First things being is what is Honkai Star Rail? It's going to be a turn-based RPG with linear progression in an expansive futuristic universe. And what is linear progression? It just means you're in concise maps where you can tackle monsters, collect chests, and solve puzzles. And each map is going to be separated and it'll allow you to travel the world in a much easier and faster pace. And now that you know that, what is the gameplay combat? We said it was turn-based. Now, what makes this different from your typical turn-based RPG? Well, when you're going through the like, overworld and you're seeing monsters, they're going to have weaknesses where they're going to be weak to physical damage, fire, ice, etc. And one thing to know, as soon as you encounter one and you're in battle, there's going to be a white meter known as the toughness meter or the shields in some ways. As soon as you break that down a little, it's only affected by weaknesses. So they might be weak to fire, ice, physical damage, lightning, what have you. And as the bar goes down, then they will be in a broken state and you'll deal extra damage towards them. It's going to be an important factor to take note of in the early game for beginners. And it's why you should be bringing at least two elements or one element at minimum when going into a fight with an enemy that's weak to a certain thing. Now, another thing to note is there's going to be two attacks that you can see initially, whether it's your basic attack and your skill. Skills are really cool because they can manipulate turn order. They can, of course, deal extra damage. They can hit more enemies depending on what type of unit they are. And they can also gather energy, which will allow you to deal ultimates. And ultimates are really cool because they actually manipulate the turn order 100% of the time, no matter which character you're using. So let's say casting like a heal and you need it like right now, well, slam an ult down and you gotta heal for everyone and you save the character's life. That can be drastically different from other turn-based RPGs. But another thing to note is what about the RNG factors? How is that calculated? Because sometimes you might miss. No, there's no such thing as like missing in Honkai Star Rail. But of course, you know, the weakness, breakness factor, you'll be dealing less damage. One thing to take into account though, is the RNG of landing an element or, you know, a resisted type. So for example, if you cast an ice skill when a unit is broken, you might have a chance to freeze them or get them frozen. But other units such as lightning characters, you can stack lightning, which will deal further damage over time, which is really cool. Or you might have imaginary that will slow down units. You can also have defense shreds proc. So that's the RNG factor that you have to worry about. But in the end of it, it's just more damage. Now that you know all of like the skills, ultimates and all that stuff, very difficult to master. Overall, it's a lot of fun. And again, it breaks the typical turn-based formula, in my opinion, is what are the different roles within Honkai Star Rail and what should I be using? There's going to be the Iridition, which are going to be AOE type damage. So they're going to be like, I guess your mages, if you want to call them that. And then we also have the preservation, otherwise known as the tanks, the more beefy, bulky, shieldier but some of them don't really look that bulky. We also have the abundance, which are healers, which I personally love because they sustain the game and the characters. We also have the Nahilti, which are debuffers, probably the most complex characters, the most useful characters in its own rights. We have the buffers that can manipulate turn order, increase attacks, and probably the most useful in all teams. And then we also have the hunt, which are going to be single target DPS, probably the favorites because they're gonna be dealing the biggest damage for everyone. Now, one thing to note, the most required characters on your teams are going to be either the preservation, which are tanks or the abundance, which are healers. And the reason why tanks are so important is because they can cast a shield, which will protect your units, or they can land taunts that will force the enemy to target them. Everyone else will be safe. Now, healers are more important in the sense because they will just straight up heal characters. I would say tanks a little bit more advanced. If you could use both at the same time, you are definitely going to survive a majority of boss fights but it's one thing to take into account. And is there such thing like is a bad character in the game? I don't think so, personally speaking. For example, Sir Vol is really good in the early game in dealing AOE damage. Not to mention Asta, she's gonna be the female red hair unit or pink hair. She's gonna be really good in the early game. I suggest using the, both of them, at least to tackle the early game content, but all of the characters are really good. Let's go into other things is what should you be focusing on early game? One of the things is a code right here that we can provide an input. 
Just note, use these codes as soon as possible. They'll be providing resources and jades and they will be expiring. So if the codes don't work anymore, apologies, but those are gonna be really good stuff. Look out through the Twitters and all the things and just acquire the resources so it can help you out. Back into it, early game focuses is there's gonna be, of course, enjoying the story and going through things. But one thing to know, as you get to Jarillo 6, I believe that's the planet with like the snow and stuff, feel free to correct me in the comments as usual. You'll be encountering a Calyx, and Calyx are going to be the things that you're going to be using your Trailblaze power, otherwise known as stamina. And ideally, you are always burning your Trailblaze power or in your stamina so that you're constantly refreshing it at a six minute rate. So one Trailblaze power equals six minutes, and then 10 Trailblaze power is going to be an hour. First, Calyx is gonna, you know, cost 10 Trailblaze power, so you'll recuperate that in an hour. Calculate that however you will. Make sure to farm your level EXP for characters early on. It's gonna be highly important in my opinion, getting everyone to level 20, especially the ones you're going to be utilizing. Ideally only level four characters at the same time. That way you don't spread yourself too thin. Eventually though, you might hit some road bumps against Branya or like a different boss. You might just need to intersect a character who will be providing you know, better weakness damage in order to break the boss. Just make sure to pay attention to elemental types. But let's say you get stuck as you're going through the fights and everything. There are going to be other ways you can upgrade light cones, which are going to be weapons within Honkai Star Rail. Feel free to upgrade some of the three stars, but not too much because you're going to be given four stars fairly frequently. I'll talk about how you get like the four star light cones, but maybe upgrade like the light cones up to like plus three at the most. And it's going to be your head or your little mask. That's going to be the ones you upgrade or your gloves for your DPS. Flat stats are going to be just better at the early game. One thing I want to point out. And then as you go through the game, you're going to be also unlocking dailies right around where you get to like the lower parts of like Bellabog and that like underground city. It's important to do your dailies every single day and try to get to them within like the second or third day of playing, ideally on the first day, but don't rush your story in order to unlock dailies. The reason why dailies are so important is because you'll start tracking your trailblaze level or your overall account rank. And the reason why that's so important is because that's the one thing that's going to time gate you from unlocking certain content. So the more times you can do your dailies, the more times you're going to be upgrading your trailblaze level, and that'll just help you progress overall in the game at a pretty awesome pace. And one thing to note in case you're getting stuck on your trailblaze levels is of course, do your Calyx runs, but most of all, do your quests that you can search up through your phones. And then of course your dailies and dailies are really fast in case you're going in Honkai Star Rail. They take less than like five minutes. Sometimes you might just be going through the game and you already have it done and it takes like 30 seconds. It's really awesome. But let's say you're still going through the game. You are still feeling weak. By the time you get to this point of the game, you should be able to talk to Pom Pom otherwise known as like your trailblaze level rewarder. All that you need to know is they're going to be the cute little like mascot of the Astral Express and they're going to be giving you a bunch of resources which will help you out whether it's going to be light cone exp, character exp, or going to be like relic exp. It's all going to be really great stuff. Also you can go to the region stores where you can buy materials in order to upgrade traces. Traces are going to be talent trees or skill trees and it's not that difficult, but ideally you focus on your levels and then your traces first, and then your light cones ideally last. And then once you get to the portions where you can unlock relics and upgrade those, yes, you can totally focus on those, but your main focus is character levels and then the light cones and of course your traces. Those three should be priority before you start worrying about upgrading relics. And then of course, we gotta talk about the different like pieces. We already talked about the head, which is HP flat and hands attack flat, hands being more for DPS, head pieces more for like your supports and tanks and everyone else, but everyone benefits from those two. Also have like your feet, and then you also have your body. Now the body has a bunch of percentage stats like HP, attack, defense, and crit rate. Those aren't really that important in the early game and I wouldn't really focus on that, nor the feet, which is HP attack. I know percentage stats are usually stronger, but that's more of like a mid game thing where you can actually farm relics at a more consistent pace. Not to mention your characters are going more into like level 40 plus or 50 plus. That's where like maybe percentage stats might have a bigger impact, but not really. Maybe when you get like more in like the 60s, yeah, that'll be more important. But early on, don't really worry about too much. 
Eventually I'll lock like the planar sphere and the link rope, but I feel like that's also mid game as well. Those are going to be percentage dash that can help you out. Lo and behold though, relics are going to be more of a mid game thing. So don't worry about grinding them and getting like the RNG set appropriately. And some of you might be like, oh, I don't like RNG in my gear. There is going to be a system that will lock your main stat into play. So there's not going to be as much RNG involved, which is the fantastic part about Honkai Star Rail in my opinion. And then once you have all that, you should be pretty good to go. Oh, one thing that I also didn't mention about light cones, any character can equip whichever light cone they want, you know, the weapons, right? But one thing to know, if the character is a destruction type, they should be ideally wearing a destruction light cone because that's the only way they're going to be getting effects. Let's say you have the abundance or healer type character where the destruction light cone they won't be getting like the destruction light cone extra effects, which is really important because sometimes light cones specifically for preservation, they'll be like, oh, this unit is likely to get targeted. That's one of the free light cones that you get as a four star, which makes like March 7th really great as a tank and should be put on her almost immediately. Last parts of progression, which I think isn't really necessary, but need to know is going to be Eidolons. This is specifically Trailblazer. All Eidolons are going to be the fact that they're dupes. So in case you have dupes for characters, this is how you get extra stats. Dupes are entirely unnecessary in this game, but they'll provide extra benefits, of course. You know, the more dupes you have, the more smaller stat gains and effect increases you can have. But in large part, this is what they can be used for. What is like Honkai Star Rail looking like at the end game? Even though we're talking about beginner's guide, what are the things that we can do that will help us, you know, just keep playing longer and understand the systems? There's going to be the simulated universe, which is going to be like a roguelike mode, which is unlimited content and where you can farm materials that you will need for your characters. And what's really cool is like you can get like randomized buffs and the enemies will grow tougher and tougher. It's a really cool system, though, because there's going to be like a stat skill tree that you can upgrade. And it sort of evolves into more than a roguelike and not to mention there's like an achievement section where you can get like more stellar jade and everything. And then also there's going to be the forgotten path which is more of like a tower of trial mode where you're going to be tackling enemies with certain levels and gaps and they're going to have weaknesses and there's going to be certain constraints that you have to follow. You're going to have to really use your mind in order to overcome those like puzzles and stuff and like those monsters and enemies you fight. And not to mention, you can also look for like hidden sort of Easter eggs where there's going to be warp trotters where you can find stellar jade. There's going to be some interesting NPCs with some crazy dialogue and just weird looking enemies that you can see. There is all sorts of secrets littered in Honkai Star Rail. I think it has more Easter eggs than a majority of the other games that are known in like this universe. So. Honkai Star Rail, it's really nice because it's a culmination of everything and I really enjoy its more laid back experience. It works really well on my phone in particular. I can do my dailies anywhere and it takes like 30 seconds. It's not as cumbersome and everything. But yeah, if you get anything out of this beginner's guide, just make sure to focus on character level ups in the beginning, not to mention your traces. And then eventually you're going to be working on your light cones, equip them on the appropriate unit type whether it's going to be the abundance, which are healers, preservation, which are tanks, the hunt, single target DPS, erudition, so on and so forth. And then not to mention, look for like those hidden Easter eggs littered about, run the simulated universe, run your relic dungeons in order to perfect your teams, maybe use a all free to play team, maybe create really unique teams, maybe prove people wrong that the weak characters are not weak. There's unlimited possibilities with Honkai Star Rail, insane amounts of capabilities on the way you can customize and reimagine how a turn-based RPG is. Its fast-paced nature is what I love about it the most, but I will say the negative thing is the cutscenes, you can't skip them. I know that might be a little bit of an issue for some folks. I just want to say that you can skip a cutscene in case you fail a fight. So that's really cool. That's a nice quality of life feature. But overall, I think you should watch the story because it's a turn-based RPG. Not to mention the voice acting, everything super engaging. But that's a beginner's guide. That's the Honkai Star Rails. I hope you learned something. In case you have like more tips or comments you want to leave, let me know down there. Anyways, if you made it this far in today's video, consider subscribing, dropping a like, leaving a comment, follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram in case you want to see me IRL what I do. Once we hit 40k subs, we'll be doing a giveaway. Thanks so much for watching. Have yourself a fantastic day and see you guys in the next one.